Hey guys, this is Jack from FPV Academy. Now I've finally been able to create an updated series of videos that will teach you how to fly FPV. In this video though, we'll talk about all the important points you need to take into consideration before you start flying. So let's get right into it. Firstly though, let me give you some quick background of myself so that you know who will be teaching you how to fly. Now I started flying FPV in January of 2016. Since then I've gone on to win many races and freestyle competitions in South Africa. I'm here to compete in my first international race at the time of making this video, but I'm hoping we'll get there really soon. Now, I'm also an ICAO licensed drone operator with a multi-rotor rating. Now, ICAO is the International Civil Aviation Organization that governs all civilian aviation based operations, including drones. So this allows me to legally fly any multicopter anywhere in the world with approved permission. That also means that all the operations you'll see in my videos are 100% legal. Now this series of videos was put together in the sense of teaching the fundamentals of FPV whilst keeping it as fun as possible to follow. I can almost guarantee you that if you follow this series of videos step by step in the way that it is presented, you will become a very proficient FPV pilot much faster than what you may think. Now by this point, I'm hoping that you know what FPV flying is and that you have your first FPV quadcopter. If you said no to any of those, then I definitely recommend you first check out the video linked on screen and only once you've gone through that series of videos, you should come back to these how to fly tutorials. Now the main point I want to focus on in this video is safety and airmanship. The biggest subject we focus on when doing the ICAO RPAS license is exactly that, safety and airmanship. Now one of the biggest headaches in the sport is that an uninformed newcomer breaks the law unknowingly and then get into trouble with the authorities. Please, it's extremely important to know your local laws, rules and regulations regarding drones. ICAO have compiled a great toolkit for drone pilots that will tell them the laws and regulations for the country that they are in. I'll include a link to that page in the description below. Please, please, please take a few minutes to go through all the aeronautical information publications and circulars of your country to make sure that you're operating and flying your drone legally. Some countries have very strict regulations as to where you are allowed to fly. This is not because they want to spoil our fun, but purely for the safety of everyone. Most of the time, you'll notice that there are very strict regulations in a small radius around airports and airfields. This is for obvious reasons. Please stick to those laws and regulations so that we can fly our FPV drones for years to come. Don't be the one sour grape that spoils the whole bunch. So now that you are aware of the safety regulations in your specific country, let's move on to airmanship. Now airmanship is a pretty broad term when it comes to flying your FPV quadcopter. It pretty much entails your decision making, taking into consideration many aspects and coming to the conclusion of, yes, all risks are minimal. If there are any major risks, then I have taken the necessary steps to mitigate them. I believe that it is safe to fly my quadcopter at this location at this time. Now to get to that point where you are ready to declare the situation and yourself safe to fly, I've compiled a short checklist for you to go through. When going through each of these points on your checklist, you want to do a risk assessment of each. This on-screen table is a simple breakdown of how to assess and classify the risk. On the left, you have the probability of the risk and on the top, you have the severity or consequences of that risk. If any of the following points fall in the red section, you need to mitigate that risk immediately. If it's orange, keep that risk in mind when you are flying. And then if it's green, you're good to go. So let's go over the checklist. Now before anything else, you need to make sure that you are allowed to fly at the location. This should be straightforward if you follow the AIPs and AICs as mentioned previously. This isn't part of the risk assessment since it is law, but it is the first thing you should look at. Next, you need to assess yourself. Now you may be thinking, well, why is that necessary? But you might not know that you yourself could be a pretty big risk if you are unfit to fly at that time. So an example could be such as follows and basically it's just did you go out with mates and maybe had a few too many drinks or maybe you're still hungover from the night before. Maybe you're really sick, took some antibiotics and it had some side effects that is now making your reaction times quite a bit slower. Maybe you're still angry with a guy that cut you off on the freeway and almost caused an accident. I will however agree that in some cases having those mental or physical factors influencing you is the reason you're flying FPV in the first place. You're using FPV as your escape and that is totally cool. When it's not cool though is when any of those factors influence you in a negative way that might affect your flying in an unsafe way. So you need to make that call and declare yourself fit for flying. Next is observations. You want to observe the location you're flying at. Start at the ground and make your way up. Ground level observations could be things such as rivers, lakes, big rocks, big bushy areas, etc. Familiarize yourself with these before you start flying so you know where they all are. You can then move up to a head high observation. These include other people, cars, building, animals, boundary walls, etc. Finally, check everything above you. 
This mostly includes weather and other aircraft. Is it gonna rain? Is it windy? Are there clouds moving closer? What's the location of the sun? And the most important one of all though, what are the chances that another manned aircraft is going to pass overhead? Now next up is inspections. You need to inspect your drone and your gear. Start on the outside of the drone and work towards the center. I'll just quickly name all the parts that you need to check before you start flying. So are my props uncracked and tightened down enough? Do the motors spin freely? Are the motor screws all tightened? Is the frame still in a usable condition and all the screws tightened? Are the ESCs undamaged? Are all cables from the motors to the ESC still connected? Are the cables from ESC to PDB and flight controller still connected? Are all other solder joints still connected? Is the camera and VTX secure? Is the receiver antennas undamaged? And finally, is the quadcopter dry and not wet? Once your quad has been checked, let's check your other gear. This is a very short little checklist, but you just need to make sure that these things are checked too. So is the radio charged? You don't want your radio to fail you while you're flying and then your quad goes into fail safe because you could damage your quad or even hurt somebody. And next are my goggles charged. And the reason for that is, again, your goggles might die while you're flying and your quad might fall out of the sky and hurt somebody. So have I checked the voltage on all my batteries and confirmed that they are all charged. So if you don't have an on-screen display, the reason you're checking this is that you know that your battery is charged and your timer will then be able to tell you, well, okay, I've been flying for two or three or four or however long your timer is. And then if it was uncharged and you put it in, you don't have OSD, you, that battery isn't going to last longer than 30 seconds to a minute and it's just going to fall out of the sky too. And that's it. So those are the basics that I personally check every single time before I fly my quadcopter. Once all those have been checked and passed, let's move on to the next section on our checklist, the safety briefing. Now usually when you fly FPV with family and friends, it's really important to give them a quick safety briefing. If they are familiar with FPV quadcopters or you're flying with other pilots, this section can be skipped. But if it's somebody that doesn't know much about FPV, this section is extremely important. Points that you want to raise during the safety briefing is as follows. Now the most important point of all, please be on the lookout and listen for other manned aircraft whilst I am flying. If you hear that they are approaching us and getting closer, please let me know. This is very, very important. Then a few other points, do not walk towards the area where the quadcopter is flying. You'll be surprised how many people walk into that area when you fly just to have a closer look. And then the next one, do not distract the pilot in any way when he or she is flying. So you'll get guys walking up to you and then start wanting to touch your goggles. Like, what's this? What does this thing do? They might even flick switches on your radio. I've had that before. That's just a total no-go. So just make sure that the people know that. And then also, if there is any sort of emergency, the relevant emergency numbers can be found on my phone or on the list printed out, which is in my car. It's just important to have your local list of emergency numbers in case something does go wrong so that you can phone the necessary people. And then finally, if somebody approaches us while flying, please relay the safety briefing. So if newcomers come while you're flying and they want to check it out and you have a mate that's standing next to you, just let that friend tell them, please don't go closer, don't touch the guy, don't talk right now, just wait until he's landed and then we can have a nice chat. So once the safety briefing has been completed, you are pretty much ready to start flying. Now the point for all of this is safety. Safety has to be your number one priority. There is so much that could possibly go wrong with a home-built quadcopter and you have to take all of these possible risks into consideration when you're going to fly. There is a massive responsibility on each and every single one of us to abide by the laws and make the right decisions when we're going to fly our FPV quadcopter. For the love of the sport, let's all stick to the laws so that we can keep flying for decades to come and grow the hobby in the safest way possible. Now, if you would like this checklist on your phone or print it out, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can download it and print out if you want to. Also, as I said, please check out the AIPs and AICs so that you know your local laws, rules, regulations for the location you are flying at. There's also a link to these in the description below, but please take the time to read through them. Now, by this time, you must be super excited to just start flying. So let's get started with that in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. This is Jack signing off.